The anticipated COVID-19 inquiry is facing delays and a secrecy row over civil servants' names being removed from documents. Uh, the preliminary hearing of uh, how thousands of personal details are being manually redacted from submissions, including the names of junior officials who took decisions in the pandemic. Um, I want to get a little bit more on this. I'm going to be joined now by the Sunday Express's health and social affairs editor, Lucy Johnston. Good morning, uh, Lucy. Great to see you. Now, we were hoping by now that we would have a couple of days of evidence that Baroness Hellett would be accumulating the information which we all need to understand what happened. So tell us why this delay. Well, I mean, there's delay after delay. And I think the, the bigger problem, really, um, is that law-led inquiries are very unwieldy. They're very expensive. They take a lot of time. That's we've seen from history. And they're very good at telling you what happened. But they're not very good at telling you why things happened. And under the original pandemic plans, the uh, a response to a pandemic should have been run by the cabinet office. It should have been a societal response because a pandemic is a societal threat. So mm. we should have had educationalists, psychologists, people who looked after children, hospitality, but instead it was run by doctors whose focus is to preserve health. And the, the remit of the COVID inquiry is not going to look at that, not going to look at why we lost that somewhere in our organisational memory, somewhere in the panic of 2020. And it will just be looking at what happened and taking views from various different people will, who will all have their view of you know how they've been affected and want to the TUC I notice are sort of making a political uh, statements out of it and saying blaming austerity and things like that so you know whether we're going to learn from it is is what I really question what um, what will the time scale be, Lucy? Now do we know they've got this month delay and also do we know how much this is costing us? Good point, yeah. So uh, we've got uh, about 60 barristers. Um, that's, uh, I think the Bloody Sunday inquiry had a similar amount, but it's pretty, you know, it's up there on one of the, the largest number of barristers. They're costing about £220 an hour up at, at maximum. There's some junior um, solicitors who, who uh, cost a bit less. So that's about £8,000 a week. So it will be running into millions. And as we've seen, as you've mentioned before, or, you know, there's this initial delay. And as we see in history, inquiries are always fraught with delays. People will complain, probably will have the word whitewash used at some point very soon. And things will take a lot longer. But whether they come to the answers about why we had a lockdown, whether a lockdown was necessary in the first place, and whether there was an alternative to lockdown, and whether it actually saved lives, are those questions going to be asked? And whether, you know, will we ever know um, how you know, I've got teenage children, how their life chances were affected. We can't know that. The inquiry can't answer that. And surely those are the questions that we need to look at so that we can prevent lives being affected for decades. Again, you know, it's to look forward, but we can't possibly answer those questions. Lucy, my fear is that on, say, issues like the fact that hundreds or decades at least of understanding about natural immunity, basics of virology, basics immunology. Why was all of that ripped up? Do we know if the inquiry is going to look at that? Um, it, no, uh, as far as I know, it isn't. And that is another problem with the inquiry. It's got a fixed remit and it's not going to look at, you know, as you say, there was lots of voices of people who uh, didn't think we should have a lockdown and those voices were suppressed and they were censored. It doesn't appear to be looking at that. So we're not going to see, and, and we had decades of work on masks and the use of masks with respiratory viruses, mass testing for respiratory diseases. All these things are not being apparently looked at. I don't know whether they will be included, but that is a problem going forward because this is now the playbook for a pandemic. And if the questions that are asked don't encompass these, then this could happen again. 
Yeah. It's also questions like, um, why did hundreds of years of medical ethics get torn up in terms of the fact that we have never, as human beings, the medical community, at least since World War II, the idea was you would never take a drug for the protection of somebody else. And yet that was also pushed through as the norm without debates. Is that going to be covered in the inquiry? Absolutely. No, I think that's another thing. And, and the rights of, of children, you know, under the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, uh, one should never bring any laws into place uh, that would affect children. You know, children must come first. We tore that up. We tore up parliamentary sovereignty and ran roughshod over that and power was ceded into a few hands. And that needs to be looked at. The Public Health Act, the COVID Act. How did we lose democracy in that way? And again, you know, I feel like the COVID inquiry is going to be just different groups with all their vested interests looking at it, and, and for good reason, from their perspectives, talking about how they were failed. But actually, to look at it, you know, from a further away and say, why did this happen in the first place? And was it the right response? And should we not think about doing something different? Because we yeah. won't know the long term effects, certainly not from that inquiry. Absolutely. And I think those who lost people to COVID, particularly in that first wave, have some huge questions to ask about insufficient PPE, but also about the suppression of cheap and effective treatments uh, that were apparently not available. Lucy Johnson, lovely to talk to you. Uh, no doubt we will be discussing this uh, over the forthcoming uh, month.